So let's get this fact straight as our foundational knowledge. Linux is the basis of several free operating systems powered by open source technology and available in rich variants for download on the internet. It has successfully rivaled closed source operating systems such as Microsoft and Apple OS, which are very expensive to buy and maintain. Examples of Linux-based systems are Ubuntu, CentOS, or CentOS as you would want to put it, or might put it, Fedora, Edbuntu, Arc Linux, Debian, GNU, etc. They are all based on Linux kernel which welds them together as very useful and powerful open source platform. Now let's talk about the financial perspective. Extremely cheap to install and maintain. All over the world, several small, medium and large enterprises have developed or adopted Linux operating systems since it's very cost effective. Now let's talk about the internal process perspective. Genome is one of the bundles that Linux operating systems comes with, which contains several useful desktops for writing and publishing calculations, presentations, drawings, just to mention a few, rather than procuring them separately. Now let's move to the customer perspective. Uh, World community maintained and updated. It is well or it very well competes and in most occasions uh, performs closed source operating systems. Learning group perspective. Linux is also the basis for Android operating system, which makes it the reason why the mobile operating system is free and is being maintained by Google. Google, as a little compensation for its time in maintaining the mobile OS, uses the platform to market its products. Okay, so now here is the uh, Linux variations in a single chart. We have the operating systems, the Linux kernels, then of course we have Ubuntu, Red Hat, Debian, Fedora, Arc, Poppy, Open Source, Black uh, Lab, uh, Slack Web, you know, flavors and the like. Now, Netrunner, Slack L, POS, Magia, uh, PC Linux OS, Zorin, uh, Boson Labs, Kubuntu, Maduro, Budi, you know, Neptune, Kali, Solos variants, and so on and so forth. There's also of course, uh, the Kali Linux. Okay, now these are like a, just a short overview of the Linux variants and the legal perspectives. You have the Debian Fedora. Uh, Debian is a Linux based free operating system powered by Linux. It ships with over 45,000 software packages. Alternatively, Fedora is a Linux based, of course, it's Linux based with workstation, server, and atomic configurations separately. Uh, Linux makes it one of the most beautiful, sleek, attractive, elegant, and strong variants of Linux based operating systems. Ubuntu is one of the most popular, tried, and tested Linux based operating systems that handles Kubernetes. OpenStack, cloud computing, Internet of Things, lots software developer friendly features. Sent OS. This is a community driven open source, Linux based operating system that provides OS images for Google, Amazon, and a whole bunch of others. Okay, so the first thing you want to do before uh, actually installing. Ubuntu Linux is going to Google and type in Ubuntu Ubuntu Linux download. You can see that in the list of options on the search bar. Now we have, of course, on the first option, you have to download Ubuntu desktop because that's what exactly we are about to do here. All right, so uh, you can see it says here download Ubuntu desktop open source desktop operating system that powers millions of PCs and laptops around the world. Find out more about Ubuntu's feature and how we support developers and organizations below. Okay, so uh, the latest we version is 22.04.2 LTS. 
so we have um, other versions now the recommended system is written here is 2 gigahertz dual core or better 4 gigabyte system memory 25 gigabyte of free hard disk space internet access is helpful but not um, necessary or compulsory and either a dvd drive or a usb port for installer media yeah now um you can see here there's another version and this is another version here it says that the latest version of the ubuntu operating system for desktop pcs as 23.04 ubuntu 23.04 comes with nine months of security and maintenance until january 2024 this is how it is wrong you know the, uh, the releases have um a e d n e o l that's the end of life uh, feature so the moment a version uh, expires then um updates to that particular version ceases okay well it doesn't stop users from using it anyway but then it's just what you need to know um now you have some tutorials here of course that you can read up certified hundreds on of devices uh these are some of the companies that use this operating system you can see hp lenovo dell and the likes uh then you have secure enterprise management which you want to prove desktop and these are other versions or some sort of uh, service download for mac download for Ubuntu. then run system containers with xlxd canonical canon canonical all right so what we're going to do here is uh, you can just download this directly okay and the moment you download it's going to download directly on your desktop here and depending on your speed this is about 4.64 gigabytes so depending on your speed you should uh, download this and then see how it goes of course as usual just like uh, the previous tutorial on Kali Linux installation uh, you're going to select the boot up key on your computer based on uh, of course the brand you have because this is ASUS. ASUS is actually ESC. That's the escape key. The moment you press the escape key, it brings up uh, this uh, feature of option where you have to choose the USB uh, removable. Yes, as the major boot device. Now, over here we are seeing uh, the group that comes with the installer package. All right, and you can see try or install Ubuntu Save Graphics. Uh, then install for manufacturers and then for memory uh, the very one that we are focused on is the very first one and um, the moment you click on the first one then the installation will begin okay so after the sequence of uh, processing uh, then this interface appears and with this interface you see uh, a list of options uh, you have the language specific language you have the try Ubuntu you can actually try Ubuntu Linux um, before you actually install and you can as well install directly without trying it out Alright, so this is the keyboard layout. Uh, ensure you select the keyboard layout that refers to your context. Here I'm selecting the Nigerian English. And then, of course, you select continue. Alright, so here this is the option for the wireless okay connecting this computer with to a wi-fi network allows you to install third-party software download updates automatically detect your time zone and install full support for your language at the moment i would suggest you just uh, 
leave it out except if you want to of course connect directly but for this uh use case i just selected connect uh, i do not want to connect to wi-fi at this time and then click continue So here you have seen the updates and other software. Uh, ensure you select the normal installation. Then, of course, you select, uh, you check the installed third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. Yes, those are the two things you need to check out here. And we'll wait for the next stage of the installation process, which I guess should be the uh, the disk partition, one of the most important. Okay. Now here are three options. You see, the, this computer is currently has uh, um, some other operating system. Okay. So it's asking you what you want to do. You want to install alongside the existing operating system, which is Fedora. Or you want to erase completely or you want to do something else uh, personally when i come to this area i just select something else the something else will give you a customized way of uh yeah customized way of um, partitioning the disks now this is the existing disk uh schema on this hard drive all right we have almost uh, 250 or I think it's almost 300 gigabyte of hard disk. The free space here is, is 1 MB. We have the, the SDE one as 249. Then the home as 10. Then the swap as 10 gigabytes. Then SDE four is uh, about 5 gig or thereabout. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be pressing uh, the minus sign to delete all of them one by one. So we can reallocate the space for the operating system that we are envisaging. As you can see, as we are deleting, the free space is increasing. Yes. Okay. So totally, we have uh, 320 gigabyte of free space. So the first thing we are putting here is the primary drive. Okay, ensure you select the primary. And then you allocate space to it. Here I'm putting 250 gigabyte out of the 320. Then of course the beginning of the space should be checked. Then the file system, usually the file system I use is the X84. Then the mount point, the mount point here should be root primary root yes that's four slash that's where you expected to select we should have about uh, almost five or six uh, partitions to go through so once we're done we click OK and the partition is created then we click the plus icon again now we make this a logical and then, uh, of course, there are other file systems that we are going to use, but we have to select one of them here. Now, I'm making this uh, reserve BIOS area because this is one of the most uh, important uh, adjustments to the new Ubuntu installation process. You need to select the BIOS area. Otherwise, the system might not uh, install fully. The operating system might not install fully. Uh, various uh, variants of uh, Linux has different modes of uh, partitioning disks and that is why this video is very important for you if you know you want to uh, go into the framework of operating uh, Linux you know 
because Linux is uh, the basis for so many artificial intelligence applications and then you know very very robust and dependable OS being used industry-wide so we need to allocate the space for um, this BIOS reserve BIOS boot area it's actually the boot group that's where the grub is going to be. The grub is what interfaces the operating systems on the system. So we just put one gig there. That's just about one gigabyte. I will click OK. All right. So we have the two now. We have the root and then the BIOS grub. Now we still have space. We have about 69 gigabytes there that we need to work on. Okay. That's about 10 gigabytes of space. This is logical, and then of course at the beginning too. We're putting this at the beginning. Now we're making this the swap area, the first swap area that we are creating, about 10 gigabytes. So we still have like 59 gigabytes. Now we're making this uh so this is about uh 19 gigabytes all right you still have 40 gigabytes to allocate and the other one we went for the efi the efi is always necessary too we also make this 10 gigabytes and our mount point Is the home? Yes. Then the file system. Make sure you notice the file system is the same e, uh, ext4. So we just have about three gigabyte left now. We click on the plus. Then of course the file system is still the same. We're giving this about one gigabyte. This is the home. Mm, I think we might have to adjust that because we have two homes. So uh, let's delete that. Since there is home already, we we'll delete the last home that we created. Then we we'll reallocate it to perhaps a swap, so that uh, the free space will be allocated for swap instead of home again. file system will be swap okay no rather it will be boot rather because uh, now let me explain this this is um, we've created uh, a swap all right we've created a boot group for the bios boots now there is also need to create a boot a boot partition okay the boot partition usually helps the system uh, to allocate space for boot up processes so rather than allocate this for the swap uh, i decided to give this the boot because the boot also is required by the new operating system boot yeah okay so we still have about uh, I think uh, 19 gig left, so we can just allocate this last space for a swap. Okay, so that the space will not be left unattended to.
a good observation sees that we already have a swap there so having a second swap might as well be logical yeah then just the entire leftover disk is now allocated to the swap and i think with this the partition table is set and the operating system is ready to install so we just click on install now after you're been certified yeah you can see that now the partition tables you know it's now giving you an uh, an, a sort of a message here that if you continue the changes listed below will be written to disks otherwise you will be able to make further changes manually warning this will destroy all data on any partitions you have removed as well as on partitions that you are going to be formatted the partition tables of the following devices are changed you can see that now so we have uh this is the partition table you have the ext4 as the root the primary drive then we have uh, the bios grow up uh, of course uh, which takes about uh, one gigabyte there then you have the swap the swap is about one gigabyte as well then uh, you have the efi there you can see that esp that's the one there then succeeding that is the home directory okay uh, then or oh, we also have the boot before we finally have the swap so this is what it looks like the moment you're okay with this you just click on continue and the process goes on Okay, here you choose your location. Okay, whatever location you are, you ensure you choose. But in this case, I'm choosing Lagos, of course. Now, your name. Uh, this is where you see fill up uh, some sort of uh, biographical information, all right? So then, you, of course, you choose a password. Ensure that your password is uh, alphanumeric. It won't just be numeric or exclusively alphabetic ensure it is numeric alphanumeric even with characters special characters perhaps so that the password will be a strong password uh, securing your operating system is very very important so you ward off intruders into your personal space So this is the installation process beginning now and uh, we're going to see a whole lot going on. Uh, depending on the speed of your system, this should take a while. Okay, so the installation is complete. The moment it completes, it's going to restart. Okay, so you just ensure you click on the restart now button. All right, so it's restarting now, and uh, it's going to ask you to remove the disk. So this is what the operating system looks like, as you can see, and uh, it is slick. Uh, design that houses so many things you can see these are the programs when you click on the activities on your far left it's going to bring up that then typing cmd brings up the command prompt this is the command prompt that actually displays uh, critical information 
that you know commands and runs the system entering you name we will of course return the name of the system again host name ctl is the command that brings up some very key information about the operating system especially the kernel version the kernel version here is linux 5.19.0.21 generic okay that's very important to take note of then here uh the other thing you might want to do is running sudo i think there's a mistake then i might need to retype that sudo as yeah it's su as a super user as sudo is sudo 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 so we correct that it is s u d o sudo super user you know at the moment you're using that keyboard it's going to request for a password because you are trying to anytime you're trying to perform a system-wide operation the, you know it's intelligently uh your operating system is built to check you know, it acts as a check this password acts as a check so that unauthorized changes will not be made without the consent of the system administrator that's the purpose of a sudo password you know just like what you're seeing right now we're trying to make a system-wide operation okay and once the password is entered access is now granted privilege access is granted for uh whatever process to be carried out to be done this is like the object you're seeing now the general object you see uh, that works in microsoft windows and other things and this is how my uh, linux generally does so particularly ubuntu in this case so i hope you've enjoyed the video please ensure to subscribe and um, be in touch with us we have our social uh, media handles on instagram tiktok facebook youtube please do subscribe to these channels and reach out if you need any form of assistance we're here to help till next time cheers and all the best